what I'm doing now is I'm taking this larger shape and I'm going to break it into smaller shapes and what I'm doing is turning the land so I'm looking down at a steeper angle at this and as that land gets closer to my eye line it turns this way and that makes the vertical height of that land smaller so what I'm doing is finding larger and smaller and smaller and smaller horizontal bands that have a color shift that let me eventually pull in my vertical trees that'll adorn that land. So if I've put in my neutral green, everything in this direction is going to have more yellow to it, and everything in that direction will have more blue to it to give me my sense of distance. And I just picked uh, a, the, one of the middle shapes of this shape to help me find that middle green. So once I've found that middle green, I'm now going to use my knife to scratch in these, the shapes, so I make sure I'm diminishing in size each time, and that's what's giving that land a sense of turning. And I may even have to add a few to come back here. And those, so this is my number of bands based off that. So the first thing I'll do is I'll take that middle green and I'll mix a series of colors that are warmer, and I'll mix a series of colors that are cooler and lighter, warmer and more saturated this way. And I may get all the way into the oranges down here just to, so which I'm actually getting so yellow that I'm adding red and getting so blue with luck that I could maybe even get into the purples. I'm not sure about that, that's a big jump, so we'll see, see, what, we'll see what happens if I can get there or not. But right now I'm gonna go ahead and mix, step to the palette and mix up some colors. And throw some stuff on the floor. So that's my middle green. Uh, the first thing I'll do is take my large scraper and pull all of this out of the way so I have the capacity to mix. And usually um, as the painting progresses I spend more and more time at the mixing table and more and more speed and less time at the canvas. Um, that's just uh, something I've found. I, that's not something I try to do. So well, I'd like you to see this process of mixing the mixed black. That's an important process. And it usually starts one of the first things I warm up with. I take this ultramarine blue, and um, the ultramarine blue, the one that I find the prettiest, it's called a Utrecht. It's a really good student grade. And I use the Utrecht paints for both my burnt sienna and my ultramarine blue. And this is where I mix my mixed black. Um, and I do that because they're student grades. They're really heavily loaded. Um, they're a good quality paint that's, uh, that you can see it's very, um, it's got a nice impasto quality. So it's got a lot of, uh, uh, without any medium to it, it's, it really stands up nicely. And I'm mixing this up now and thinning it out and making sure I have enough blue and enough brown to get me a dead neutral black. And that's going to be the base of the mixing greens. And I'm going to slow this down so you can see how I do that. This is a real process. I use the back of the knife to gather the paint and smush it down rather than using the top of the knife, which makes a, uh, it's difficult to clean. So I've got a good neutral black, and I'll skip that off to the side. And just so you can see the color, I'll put a little yellow into this. And you can see that's a really usable green. It doesn't have to be augmented too, too much. And if I want to warm it up or brighten it, I'll add more yellow. If I want to warm it up more, I'll add a redder yellow. So that's the mixed black with the cad yellow medium. This is the mixed black with the Indian yellow. You can see it's just slightly warmer. Ooh. You're going to have to wait a second. I'm going to have to get some more paint. Guys, I tend to use these pints of paint instead of the tubes, um, just because I go through so much of it. Um, and the problem with them is that if you don't use them all at once, you've wasted a lot. I mean, that's like, you know, 80 bucks, so you, you know, it's like a hunk of paint. Uh, 
So you, if you don't use it all up or keep it dry, you're in trouble. Thanks, Susan. All right, so this is, now we're looking at two greens. That's a warmer green, it's got more of the lemon. I mean, I'm sorry, more of the Indian. That's a cad yellow medium. And this is the same mixed black with a little bit of this lemon. And that's gonna make a beautiful lighter green. So this is gonna be closer to my, um, here's my permanent green light. So I'm gonna try to get a little more thallow into that to cool that off a little bit more. There we go. So I'm making a progression from that cat, from that permanent green light into almost an orange. And I may just literally throw a little orange into the back side of that just to see if I can't get, I mean, that's still gonna be a green, but it's almost a red green. So I've got a nice transition here. Now I've gotta get this transition this way. So I'm gonna add a little ultramarine blue and some mixed gray. And I just scooped up that permanent green light. And I want that to be green, so I'm gonna add, if I'm going uh, warm this way, I'm gonna come back and warm this up a little bit too, just to bring us into the green range. All right. I'm gonna need one more color, and that's just thallow and that mixed black and a little lemon and some white. So it's almost a teal. And that's not quite getting there, so I'm gonna throw in a little of that. Emerald, there we go. That's gonna go right between those two. So now I've got my palette mixed and it's literally, now it's kind of paint by number. I've given myself my wedges. I've given myself uh, the, my transition. I'm gonna start with the farthest back color and move forward and let my brush size increase. And I'm gonna go against the shape. So the farthest back color is gonna be somewhere in here. It's that little band. And this is just literally, I'm laying in every, the band of color. And I'm gonna get a little darker and a little purer as I come forward. And I'm doing it right on top of the wet paint so that I have a mixture of color rather than having a solid mass. I tend to scoop the paint up. And this is a little screwy, but I actually have a tendency to mix the paint on my right foot and paint on my left foot. Don't even ask why, but I think that that adds a sense of athleticism to what's going on. And since I'm naturally not an athlete, this makes me feel good. So that's that cad green, or that permanent green light color close to it. And I'm gonna warm it up, just add a little more yellow, get the shapes a little bigger, get a little more aggressive. up and finally end up here I don't know if I can pull this off but we'll try not quite Okay, now I'm gonna stand back and look at the color transition. That's good. 